What is up, my YouTube flock? It's your boy, Flockbird, back at it again with part three of the Colonel Sanders Dating Simulator. Yes, I can't believe it. We're finally here. Part three, the finale of this amazing journey. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. You awake to a beautiful morning, Colonel Sanders Hideaway. Did you make the right decision on how to respond to Colonel Sanders? Only time will truly tell. Ooh. Ooh. We'll see, we'll see. Today is a day. <laughs> yes, today is a day. <laughs> that could change the rest of your life. Your thoughts are interrupted when Colonel Sanders emerges into the room. He's holding a gorgeously plated breakfast, and your mouth waters at the sight of it. Here's a simple breakfast I just whipped up. It's Medicalis. Ooh, look at those biscuits. Though, I don't know about fried chicken for breakfast, but those biscuits look pretty dang good. Those don't look half bad for breakfast food, not gonna lie. You taste Colonel Sanders' food and it takes you on a journey. When you return, he's waiting to ask you an important question. So, would you say that we're the perfect match? Oh, oh, oh Colonel. I would say so, yeah. How presumptuous. My cuisine and your taste buds, that is. Oh, oh, oh right, right, that's totally what I was talking about, right, right, taste buds and cuisine. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> such confidence, such grace. Could he be the world's greatest gift to cookery? Oh, he's more than the greatest gift to cookery, I'll tell you that much. Take him down a peg, flatter him. I feel like this isn't the right choice, I don't know. I, don't, I feel like smack talking your crush is a good idea, let's flatter him. Yeah, there you go. Hearts, hearts are flock. Come on. Head it over, let's go. You know, I think we might make a great team. A single tear begins to pull in the corner of his eyes as he gazes out the window. Oh, no, be quiet. And with the right business partner, I know I can't fail. Business partner, could we be talking to you? It's all happening so quickly. Overcome with emotion and confused by your feelings, you're on the verge of tears, unable to speak. The only answer you can find is to run out the door and get home. There's still one more day of school after all. Oh no! Come on. Oh, I can't run out on Colonel Sanders, man! Look at him! Well, you can't see him now, but look at him! Imagine him in your brain! Imagine the Colonel Sanders! And you just run away from that? Wow. The University of Cooking School, Kemi for Learning waits for no one. You get home to find something very surprising. Your best friend is there, waiting for you. How did you get inside my house? <laughs> Where have you been? I... Because I had one heck of a night. I've been desperate to talk to you about it, but I couldn't find you. I get worried that something had happened to you. Sag. Sag face. Right there, that's a Sag face. It's okay, I was just... But now that it turns out you're fine, I can finally get you to speed on the Sage... Oh, Saga. <laughs> sage. One of the 11 herbs of spices, Sage? Maybe? <laughs> on the Saga of Miram. Sure, but... You will not believe what happened to me after school yesterday. I went on a day! Oh, gosh. Please don't. Not... Oh, no. I think I know where it's going. I think I can believe that. Since I've been partnered up with Clank, oh no, no, he's a robot! <laughs> he asked me to go out with him. Of course I told him, you better keep your dial certain to polite and respectful. I'm not that kind of girl. Well, at least she has some standards. I respect that, Miriam. But he was just interested in spending some one-on-one -on -one time together and getting to know me. So I said, yeah, sure. I can get to know the little metallic guy. <laughs> Long story shirt. He took me skydiving with his fr S Skydiving? The metal appliance went skydiving with you. 
Right. But things quickly spiraled out of control. Did you just kind of exactly? I said that's a typical first date to go on with a talking pressure cooker. And now I'm not really sure where we stand. Oh, oh, baby girl, it's gonna be okay. You don't give Miriam time to tell her whole story of her. Bolting up the details of your own night is just too much to bear. And I went on a date too. Back to Colonel Sanders' house where I spent the night with him. You what? Nothing happened. But the emotional connection wowsers. Yeah, I know. We, we tried to make something happen. But after game over. <laughs> Miriam tells you to move on from this whole Colonel Sanders obsession and focus on school. Being obsessed with Colonel Sanders is wrong. You don't want to be right. True. More words have ever been truer. After a short argument, you both agree to go your separate ways. <gasps> oh no. When you arrive at school, you encounter arrivals in the quad. You tell from a distance that they're picking on Pop, though he himself may not quite grasp that fact. Because you know, he's Pop. What's a swirly? It sounds delicious. Oh, it's great. Oh, do you want up right away? I'll have my swirly with sprinkles, please. He, he sprinkles a dog in a tree. Oh, poor, poor Pop. You can get your swirly dipped, too. Oh, no. Disgusting! Why don't you pick on someone your own size? Because I'm literally the biggest person at the school. Well, Mr. Joe John Personator, I don't care. <laughs> There's that horse that Colonel Sander rides to school, but who would dare pick on such a gentle and beautiful creature? You got some nerve, Flop. You're seeing I picked on a defenseless horse. Now you're twisting my words, and I won't have it. You clench your fist, but the injury of yesterday's mixture accident makes you wince with pain. Does it look like you can go on cooking like that? Might as well just give up. I'll never give up, ever. Colonel Sanders arrives, just as it appears things are close to boiling over. A naturally intuitive person, he senses that something has been going on. Is everyone excited for the final day of school, Flock? How's that hand feeling? I'm sure you'll be back in final form by this afternoon. Aren't you concerned about my hands, Colonel? Yesterday I almost broke a nail winning so hard. You just have... Has anyone ever told you of his most punctual face, Ashley? Gosh, Ashley. Technically, I don't believe a winner was decided, but your presentation was quite impressive. What is he doing complimenting her? Okay, okay. I'm all for swooning over him, but we can't get this jealous. It's a, it's a turn off. But what about the flavor of my delicate, warm, gooey chocolate sauce? It was clear that you're passionate about your food is received. That's loved words to say it was bland. Excuse me, Flock. I am more than capable enough to speak for myself. Yeah, this is bad news. Maybe you could tell me more of your thoughts as we walk into class, Colonel. I'm always interested in discussing the fine art of fine foods. Sit you inside, Flock. Annoyed by Colonel Sanders' inability to see Ashley, for who you know she really is, you walk across the quad to get some distance. To distract yourself from how slighted you feel by that interaction with Ashley, you take out the spell book you recovered yesterday and start flipping through the pages. No, Flop! Whoa, that's the book? It looks like bad news. It's just something I found lying around. It would appear to be some sort of grimoire, but I don't really believe in that magic stuff. A grimoire? Like a book of spells? I don't know. Who would spend so much time decorating a magic book if it weren't really powerful? I think of one surefire way to find out. You open to a page covered with arcane warnings. Cast only in case of extreme emergency, it says around edges of the page. I could use this spell here that says it will erase anyone I choose from all my memories. If I scrub out Colonel Sanders, it would probably help me focus better on the upcoming final exam. No, Flock. This is how every uh, downfall starts. 
That is way drastic. Couldn't you do something else, like anything else, not ruin in dark magic? Maybe tie a string around your finger. Okay, fine. It is drastic. But desperate times call for desperate measures. You got a memory erasing spell sitting right in front of you. A uh, pretty good excuse to try it out. Yeah, I've been saying this. I'm not doing it. Dark magic is not the way. You take your friend's advice and put the book away. It's almost time for class. Sprinkles is already in the room, waiting for students to arrive. He clears his voice to make a quick announcement. I want you all to know, I feel something of a dog moment coming on, but I assure you, it's something you're very afraid of. His cute little nose scrunches up and he begins to breathe quickly. He must be hungry, reach for some old homework to give him as a snack. Dogs can be rather unpredictable, especially sprinkles. Wait to see what happens. I feel like the homework might make him madder? He's like, oh, you're gonna feed me homework? Yeah, no, let's, let's just see what happens. Sprinkle stops in his tracks. He focuses on the window. The room is deadly silent. When you follow his gaze, you see a tiny orange squirrel perched on the cherry tree outside. Sprinkle turns feral and runs to the window of the classroom, begins sparking uncontrollably at the squirrel outside. Terrence, I told you never to come back here! Terrence, I will destroy you! Terrence! Now this. Go! Go, Sprinkles, go! Sprinkles sparking ferociously, drool flying off his face. The squirrel looks over, but doesn't say anything back. You wonder, is that even a talking squirrel? Who named him Terrence? You better not shove your chubby cheeks around here ever again. After Sprinkles is satisfied with his presence, has been felt by not only Terrence, but any other squirrel in hearing distance, who turns to his professional tone. <clears throat> I apologize for the outburst. This actually brings up an important point. Thank you, Flock, for reminding me to dole out this indispensable bit of wisdom, you see. But before you can go any further, Miriam's love drama spills over to the class. Sprinkles is interrupted by whirls and sparks coming from the back of the room. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Am I allowed to show this? I told you to save it for after class. You think I want to be thrown from a plane strapped to a stranger? Miriam and Clank appear to be arguing, but you still haven't learned to speak Clank's language and mechanical noises. Wah. But no, you had to show off to your cool friends, Jeff and Joan, J and J forever. Watch us from a triangle in midair as we descended. Triangles are the strongest shape, don't you know? Bzzz, bzzz. Yeah, well that doesn't make it a great date. Beep war. Then taking Jeff with you, you can all hold hands as you pedal down the mountain or off a cliff for all I care. Sad beep. Damn. So much for love. Clank begins to shudder. Steam pours out of his gaps in his panels, and then a loud ding stops him in his tracks. Beep. No amount of seizing is going to make me want to eat that, Clank. Clank burps out a not completely deep fried sneaker. Considering that he himself has wheels, not feet, and telling you clearly where it came from. Uh, might have a, you know, Terminator situation. Murder bot. In terms of deep fried footwear, I guess it looks okay? Clint slowly rolls out of the room to be alone with his shoe. Everyone tries to pretend like they didn't see that entire thing go down. Nothing like a loud public breakup to cast a pall over the final day of school. It wasn't even a day! And they're broken up already. Damn. Well, that was unfortunate. But well, we mustn't be distracted from what lies ahead. The final comp competition showdown, challenging exam. I'm still working on the title, but I think you get it. Test time approaches. See you all in the arena. But before you can think about your upcoming competition, there's a very beautiful soul nearby in need of a pep talk. Hey, Miriam, are you okay? 
Okay, I'm so mad I could smash a tiny mug spilling several droplets of hot cocoa all over the floor. Damn, she's serious about this. Damn. How could he embarrass me in class like that in front of everyone? Returning Coco is a delicious treasure, so you know that this breakup was no joke. Even if the sorcerer of first Jason is just a silly boy. A silly metallic boy, to be precise. I know that you know this, but I'm gonna say it out loud. You don't need anyone. Me and you, we're gonna cruise through this final test and hit the carpool lane to success city. Yes, carpool. Are so cool. Miriam brightens up, imagining the wind rushing through her short bangs, but she hesitates to embrace the feeling all the way. You're not going to settle up on Colonel Sanders' stallion right off into the sunset without me? Of course not. Well, maybe, so, but I'm sure there's a pony out there with your name on it, and a big ranch enough for both of us, and whoever else we want to bring along. If it's not Pop or Clank or anyone else you meet today, tomorrow, or this whole year, so what? You're a special person who shouldn't settle for the someone to show a little interest anyhow. Yeah, you go Miram, I believe in you. You are the best of best friends. Miram gives you a big hug and wipes the tears from her cheeks. I should really review my menu for today. I'm going to make a very special soup. And I bet that Professor Dog is going to love it up. While you were pep-talking Miriam, you constantly missed lunch. But that's okay, but you had a better idea of how to spend the time before your exam. You decided to head to the arena early to practice the dish. This is it, the location of your final challenge. A test of will, a test of courage, a test of talent. A chance to beat the pants off of Van Van and supposed Mon Mon and his eviler counterpart, Ashley. As planned, you begin to run through a quick test of recipe you've been working on. Flock's famous chicken pot pie. After practicing for months, making this dish comes second nature to you, and you're able to quickly get a fresh pot pie in the oven. But as soon as you do, your creme session is interrupted by Colonel Sanders. And where the hell do these cherry blossoms come from? Are we not indoors? Flock, what are you doing here? There's still time before the final exam. Oh, just taking it all in. I'm big into visualizing success. I'm looking at my station and picturing victory. The pot pie has begun to bake and the smell slowly filling space around you. Visualize, no? That's too bad. I was hoping you were here cooking something delicious. You would usually happily share your food with anyone who was hungry, but the last time you let Colonel Sanders get in your head, it cost you a cook off. You decide that it's time to put your cooking above your romantic desires, but the decision gets hard to stick when, to when the oven timer goes off behind you. Ignore it. There was no sound at all. Best up about your practice dish. Who? <sighs> I don't know what to do. Because we gotta focus. But. <sighs> I don't know what to do. I don't know what the right answer is. It's just tough. Because this one, you know, yeah, we get our cooking degree and whatever. This one, we probably get Colonel Sanders. Let's go for ignore it. Did you hear that? Hear what? I distinctly heard a bell chime. Somebody must be training sprinkles to do a trick. I bet his mouth is wandering. Strange. I was going to say that my mouth was watering. I'll ask, I'll have to look somewhere else or something to taste to put in it. Smoke begins billowing out of the oven, filling the rain around you. <coughs> yep, I guess you <coughs> will. I'll leave you to it, man. Happy visualizing. Disappointed Colonel Sanders leaves the arena. When the coast has cleared, you finally open the oven. To find your practice body has been reduced to ash. Smells like lunch. Beat it, Pop. <laughs> There's no time left. The final showdown is about to begin. Sprinkles lays down the ground rules. There are no rules. That is, you have to cook with everything you've got. You step up for the cook-off of a lifetime. You decide that mac and cheese plus the pot pie you've been practicing are just dishes that will push you over the edge of victory. Meanwhile, both Van and Van are nationally preparing wildly elaborate dishes per their usual over-the-top cells. 
Mirror has her giant magnifying glass and several sets of tweezers. She's definitely prepared to go big, going small. Claire Sanders seems to be harvesting his love in herbs and spices, but he's trying to find a way to improve on something perfect. The original recipe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, the trademark. <laughs> the intensify in the room starts at a full 10 out of 10 with a frenzy of action. Everyone was calling out really cool special cooking moves to prepare their food. Wow, this is getting serious. Cooking moves like <laughs> like spells like Ooga Booga, Chicken Sauce, Lambe. Guy choose you, Chicken Man. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Colonel Sanders batters his chickens as it levitates through the air. <laughs> levitates? Egg wash! Miriam furiously injects ingredients into an itty bitty pot of broth. Bash friend blaster blaster! Oh no, it is. It's actually what they're doing. <laughs> Using like. Oh no. Van Van flexes his pectorals as he chops open a sea urchin. Let's rock and roid. Well, I'm sure you do some type of roids, bud. <laughs> Got him! Ashley last, last, scoops her pastries off the tray with lightning speed. Shallow personality spatula! <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, shallow personality indeed. Even Clink gets in on it. Five dial pressure point chicken cooking technique! Only the true. Pressure cookers know this masterful technique. Wait, when did Click learn to speak English? It's the singularity as was foretold. We mustn't let it happen or the appliance uprising will take us all. self destroy. Van Van quickly unplugs Clank and rolls him out the back door of the arena. As you friendly prayer your day, she knows Ashley is your spell book out. Is she going to use some dark magic to turn the tide? You got a book of your own and you're desperate not to see her win another battle. Should you take this opportunity to fight magic with magic, even if it's almost certainly evil magic? Hell no! Do it the hard way! Colonel Sanders will appreciate the love, and you'll see Ashley as the evil person she is. Who needs magic when you're got passion? I'm gonna do it the hard way. Colonel Sanders sees that you've chosen to win on your own terms and he gives you a subtle wink from across the room. I believe it, Duflock. Miriam knows this too. And I've always believed in you, Flock, since you were little kids, because I'm your best friend forever. You turn to us that Miriam is at your station, cheering for you. Miriam, what about your dish? If you hear cheering, who's cooking? Tidy food. Short cook time. I'm not sure what he done, so I thought I'd help you. Oh, that's sweet, but... Miriam presses a handful of spices directly into your boiling noodles. It's a secret ingredient! However, she doesn't know that you lied and the ingredient was made up. And where in the world did she get Eye of Newt from? The boiling pot explodes, sending Miriam flying backwards. Though all her immunity is in the swirl in the air, bubbling up into a dark cloud that thickens and geals before your very eyes. It is I, Steve, the Sport Monster. Steve, wait, what happened to Borco? You're not here to battle me, are you? We Sport Monsters are many. I think Borco had the day off. But you have conjured Steve, and I hate to battle, so I'd say you're doing pretty alright. Oh, hey, you're in the middle of a cooking competition? I love this stuff. It's better than TV. Your crazy kids and your culinary skills really impressed me. What if I hang out? I'm sorry, Steve, but I'm kind of in the middle of something. Do you mind? Steve, the spork monster, knows that you've got the grimoire stash beneath your cooking station. I see what you're up to. Crisscross some magical items and accidentally summon me, huh? Ha, yeah, you guessed it, sort of. If you're here, would you mind tossing some fresh noodles in a pot of salted water? I'd love to. I've always wanted to be a top chef. Actually, you know, when I was just a little spork pup back in the old country. You can feel Spork Monster winding up to tell a very long and involved story. You don't know exactly where they came from, but it seems like it was probably lonely there. Actually, you know what? Maybe you should watch from the stands. I really need to focus on this competition. 
I understand. It's kind of like that time in monster school that I had fallen asleep during scare tactics class, and when I woke up, he talks a serious stare at CV and takes the hint. Never mind, I'll tell you later. Good luck. Having suffered this huge setback, you don't know how you could ever win. Give up and drop out of culinary school, you summon extra power from deep down within you. Yes! Summon the power within! The power within! I can do this. I have what it takes. I came here to win. Your hair turns mac and cheese orange as culinary energy falls through your body. It's time to go mac and say it. Mac a mac a cheese. My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing the entire lives for. Yes, what? You are the chosen one. You will avenge me. The power you've been summoning immediately fades back out. You interrupt my inspiring monologue. Sorry. My heart is pure, my hands are steady, my taste buds have been preparing the entire lives for this moment. I will show the world my cookery. You begin to levitate off the ground, the energy courses through your body. You know that with this power you can do anything, except turn back time, which would be super useful because while you were powering up, your chicken pot pie overcooked in the oven and can't be served. But don't worry, dear flock, you may have suffered some setbacks, but it's all not lost. Impressed with your fortitude, Hero Sarah decides that he has earned his support. I've been watching you today, and I must say, I'm truly impressed. You've been dangling on your feet and rolling with the punches. He steps up to your station and stands right beside you. I'm here to hail. All you've managed to make is mac and cheese, and the time is all lots up. You should only need it. But Colonel Sanders, what about the test? What will happen to you? What about the rules? Follow the rules as it's never really been my thing. I follow my heart. What a guy. Colonel Sanders is full of a delicate white towel to reveal the most delicious fried chicken tenders you've ever laid your eyes on. Remember, sometimes unexpected combinations can have surprising effects or surpass their individual efforts. Are you suggesting if you combine forces, we can form the perfect food union? Time's up, students. With time expired, it's the moment everyone has been waiting for. You must now prepare to present your dishes. A handful of students stand tall, but the class seems incomplete. It seems we're missing some students. Pop, clink. From all certain, you hear a pure and innocent giggle that can only come from one student. <laughs> I'm flying. Sounds like it's coming from the broom closet over there. Miriam, would you mind? So the closet you see Pop hanging up on a broom hook with the elastic of his underpants. Pop, get down from there right now. Let me guess, did Van Van have something to do with this? When someone asks for a wedgie, who am I to refuse? I thought it was a wedgie, it was a salad. It looks like Pop is eliminated from the challenge, seeing how he didn't cook anything. I can't feel my legs. Am I ex May I be excused? Sure. You kids and your pranks. I must say, it's not the worst prank in UCS AL history, but it's not exactly your book material. Wait a second. Pranks? Pranks? Clank! Where did that pressure cooker roll off to? You wait to hear a signature where a beep or other onomatopoeia, but there's none. Somehow we got. Somehow he got must have gone um somehow he got must have gotten sprinkles on your dog, but like come on man. Grammar. Somehow he got must have gone unplugged, I guess. We'll have to figure that out later. That leaves only four remaining students. Please collect your final projects. Yes, it has it been a long semester. Wow, three whole days. The longest three days of my life. <sighs> It all started three days ago, when I, <laughs> Jim Chuck, I'm not going to go through hell. But after days of hard work, time has come for me to eat. Mira, please step forward. Now, describe your dish. I've made tender undan noodles in savory soup. My word, it's so delicate. Is that a teeny tiny 
Nerd to Maki, I spy afloat in this itsy bitsy pole. Yes, Chef. Please call me Sprinkles. Chef is my father's name. <laughs> Funny guy, Sprinkles. Yes, Sprinkles, and some green tea made from baby tea leaves I picked myself. Sprinkles carefully sifts around the dish before opening his mouth and letting just the tip of his pink dog tongue dip into the bowl. Sublime, what do you want like a taste? Oh, come on, I'm not one of those dogs who doesn't floss. I even have a really cute electric toothbrush for dogs. Fine, I'll enjoy it all to myself. In a flash, the entire meal has been devoured. Not that it took much, it was less than a thimble's worth of soup. A plus, really do I taste a dish with as much love poured into it as yours. Miram is overjoyed. She gives you a huge hug. Thank you, Flock, for helping me to believe in myself. Bon Bon, you're up. Now describe your dish. I made uni over smooth egg custard and axiom urchin shell topped with a caviar. That does not look appealing. That was supposed to be like fine dining. But I don't think I would ever eat out of the sea urchin. That does not seem safe. <laughs> Did you skewer one type of urchin with spines for a second different colored type of urchin? Yes, sprinkles. A bit much, don't you think? That's exactly why I did it. A bit much is kind of my brand. Doesn't it look cool? Sprinkles leans in to sniff the uni, but he can't get his nose close on account of all the spikes. He begins to paw at it erratically, causing the custard to slosh around. Woof! Woof! Please be gentle with my cuisine. Grrr! Finally, Sprinkles goes all in, tongue first, but he can't get all past the needles. He reels back, his tongue is poked and prodded. Ouch! My tongue! The refresher appears to be having an allergic reaction to the sting. I can't eat this. It keeps poking my tongue. Disqualify! A sudden turn of events. Who would have thought that serving food in a bowl made of needles can make it difficult to eat? The ejected Van Van does not go gentle in the night. <laughs> Disqualified for glamour? Don't discount sympathy. This is the last you've heard of me. Before forcing us to endure his swollen tongue for another moment, Sprinkles graciously laps up some bowl of milk. I oh, know, I know, yeah, I'm a dog and I drink milk. Get over it. Sometimes it helps calm my agitated tongue. Next student, Ashley, it's time to step up. Now describe your dish. I made orange blossom Turkish delight and a light rosewater syrup topped with French meringue and connected by sugar glass. That actually doesn't sound too bad. Indeed, it's quite delightful. However, I'll ask that you please refrain from eating it or attempting to taste it anyway. It's very fragile and meant to be display, please. Don't eat the food at a cooking school? Get toasters or something, Flock? I told you, it's a display piece. That's what I must say. It is beautiful. However, this is a cooking competition at a cooking school. Yeah, which is why I cooked it and did an extremely good job cooking it, too. I didn't realize that we were having an eating exam. If I wanted to be judged on eating, I'd go to the College of Eating, a school for the hunger. <laughs> These names of schools. Who? What organization names these schools? I suppose you could smell it if you're absolutely insisted, but don't breathe too hard. You might disrupt the sugar spiral. If the food cannot be eaten, it cannot be judged. You are disqualified. Rage overtakes Ashley, and she finally cannot keep her two-faced routine up. You wouldn't know high-end cuisine if it cooked you. With that, Ashley storms off to 
rededicate yourself to being the best, but this time without being shackled by trying to fake nice and like by everyone. This isn't the last you've heard of me either. If this class gets much smaller, I'll be teaching myself. You and Colonel Sanders, the final cook, step up together. Two chefs? But began as a bowl of delicious mac and cheese, has become something else. He examines it closely, sniffing and eyeing the bowl. Oh my gosh. Oh, I want this now. I want some nice chicken fingies with my mac and cheesy wheezy. Oh, give it to me. I need it in my life. Uh-oh, I don't have a good feeling about this. From somewhere in a room, a literal drum roll plays. <laughs> Just when I thought I'd seen everything in this kitchen, you give me this, this, this thing, and completely blow me away. In my 49 dog years of life. 49 dog years? 40, 49 dog years? Cause dog years are, Wait, it's actually pretty old. That means, oh no, wait, dog years, right, 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 right. I'm an idiot. No, dog years is seven dog years equals one human year, so he's only seven years old. Never mind. I thought it was normal, 49 normal human years, and then I multiplied by seven. Okay, never mind. Disregard that all. Haha, <laughs> I'm not dumb. <laughs> It's so delicious, in fact, that everyone passes the class. You pass, you pass, and you pass, and you get a pass. Which is the Oprah show now? Do I have to look underneath my seat? Do I find, oh my gosh, it's a Lamborghini. <laughs> everyone gathers around and partakes in the mac and cheese bowl. They all seem to transcend this reality into another dimension. You win. Together, you and Colonels have made a new menu item. The men new menu is so impressive that even Van Van and Ashley are drawn back in by its magnificent fragrance. When they gaze upon your mac and cheese bowl, they admit that you are indeed an excellent chef. Sprinkles declares that you have passed. Everyone has passed. There were supposed to be more battles, but come on, how could they be better than this one? Now that the school year is complete and everyone's graduated, the students return for one last assignment to get their groove on. The cafeteria has been completely decorated in order to serve as the site of a school's graduation dance. Compared to the massive high-tech cooking arena, the humble decor seems downright cute and cozy. DJ Dorgan is in the house! Ow, ow, ow! You know that Sprinkles was a master chef, but also a world-renowned turntablist? Who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Van Van and Ashley tell everyone that they've committed themselves to writing the wrongs they did while they were the villains. Oh my goodness, Van Van. What are you wearing? Ashley, just normal high school attire right there. But Van Van, what are you wearing? What are those? Oof. For a moment, you actually believe them. Not another haunting. No ghosts allowed at graduation. It's clearly we're in the school's bylaws. I was never actually a ghost. It was all a trick to get you all to finally notice me. Oh, amusing. Now that everyone's together? It's a spork monster. He is totally mellowed out. Everyone, the spork monster is no more. From here out, I prefer that everyone refer to me by my new name. Party monster. Sid tries to finish what he has to say, but everyone is too wrapped up talking to Spork. Sorry, party monster. Dejected, student walks off. Maybe things didn't work out for Mira romantically, but she found the love in her cooking, and now she's gonna do great. A red carpet rolls out across the floor of the ballroom. It's like a Hollywood movie premiere. Who could have had such an entrance? It's Pop. He's arrived late to the dance, but apparently for a good reason. Walking the car, man, you see perched on top of his dirty chef hat that... A crown? Welcome back, Pop. 
I know you weren't able to complete the final exam and accept your diploma, so we had it mailed directly to your father. We figured it was the least we could do for the school's deed. Oh, now I get it. And we get a new wig in the school, not to mention the honor of educating the son of the Chancellor of Sh Such and Such. <laughs> The music of the dance is interpreted by the sound of sparkling electrical hissing. It's Clint, because you arrived late to the dance. Now that I've graduated, I can reveal my truth. Are we still doing the talking thing? I am Clank, and I am not this earth. I am actually from a faraway planet in another dimension. What? What? I actually feel like I knew this this whole time. Now that I've learned the ways of your kind, I must return. Miram, will you come with me? I don't know what to say! Besides, no, obviously. I must, I, I have just begun to learn who I really am. This isn't the time for me to devote my life to figuring out who you are, Clay. You're blown away by Miram's maturity. It's pretty clear she has managed to suppress you in that regard. I understand. Kind of. Humans are weird. A portal opens up and Clank disappears through it. Finally, <laughs> this Colonel Sanders, I'm just imagining like Colonel Sanders is like a fan with like a bag of cherry blossom <laughs> petals that just jumps it out whenever he enters a room. Howdy classmates, oh no. Casual Colonel Sanders, what a treat. Just like that, the first day you met him, he has come prepared to feed the entire class. However, it's not enough to just give them a bucket of chicken. This time, it's a full meal. I didn't get to be the most famous chicken man in the history of chicken, a man, but now I'm reminding people to go out and buy my chicken. <laughs> Hashtag not sponsored, by the way. Hashtag not sponsored. But coleslaw, biscuits, two potatoes, a big bucket of chicken. The end? Question mark? No, it's not the end. As everyone feasts on their delicious chicken dinner, Colonel Sanders finds you sitting at the end of the dance floor. Brock, or what are you doing sitting all alone? Oh, you know, just waiting for the right person to ask me to dance. I wonder, might you tell me what are your qualities that you would expect to find such a lucky person? Of the top of my head, oh, I don't know, a spicy musk, a tidy key, and maybe a degree from the University of Cooking School, can be for learning, just to name a few. It truly is my lucky day. Would you dance with me? Yes, I would love to. As you glide across the dance floor, hand in hand with Colonel Sanders, the future stretches out in front of you. And once my with hunts of franchise up and running, I'll be ready to take a day off. And I'll be glad to spend it together with you, Flop. How sweet. We'll work together and play together. Colonel Sanders stops in his tracks. Work together? Well, um... I think it's something I'll just need to do by myself. But who will help you run your restaurants? I don't believe I need help there. Besides, based on your time at school here, do you really think running restaurants is the best path forward? Could it be you found a love connection but failed to earn Colonel Sanders' respect as a show? Could you live only half of him? You'd be able to endure sharing him with his other love, the life of an entrepreneur. I suppose I can enroll at pastry school. Oh my dear Flock, I'm sure you'll find your place eventually. And along the way you'll have me by your side. The end. Fade to white. <sighs> and there we have it guys. <laughs> the end of a beautiful journey. I would like to thank you all for watching. But that, ladies and gentlemen, was I Love You, Colonel Sanders, a finger-looking-good dating simulator.
And there you have it. The Chicken Man has gotten his other Chicken Man, Colonel Sanders. Though only halfly, as his true love of business overtakes my love. So, again, thank you all for watching. And I guess I'll see you in the next video. Um, make sure to go down the description. Uh, hit that like button. Subscribe if you aren't already to get more amazing content from me. Then go ahead and hit that little bell so you know when that content is uploaded. Without a further ado, it's time for me to say, Abba boy.